Okay, good. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, so welcome people who are joining. Um, yes. So we have a our icebreakers today. Uh, so there's a freeform question, what kind of projects have what can you use what we've learned so far on? And then, well, I think I am watching is the same as yesterday. And then after the course, so basically I'm curious how people review what we've done and which of our materials, like, is it even worth trying to produce these videos and things like that? Um, yes. So okay. The question about the project is that about um, in which types of projects people can use like Git? Like, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. So we have a guest for our starting time today. Um, Ryan is here. Uh, yes. Hello. Hello. So okay. how's my audio? Is that am I louder? Am I softer? Should we do another test? Yes, test. Uh, okay. Someone says I guess. it's good. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Hi. So, okay, yeah, so Marine used to work with us as a, well, with me as a research software engineer, and now is a researcher again, uh, either temporarily or permanently, I guess we can see. Let's, and has, let's hope permanently, but yeah. <laughs> see what happens. And has taught in code refinery before, but Ryan was recommended to come talk to us because of work in large projects, like not just large, like a few, like a group, but what did he say? Thousands of people are using some of your things. Like which project our, our is this? Our users are in the thousands for sure. Okay. Our, I, I just checked our contributors are, we have more than 300 contributors at the moment. Okay. But most of them are one-time contributors. I think we have like an active group of 50 yeah. contributors. Um, so how but, do these people work? Like, how do you manage contributions of 300 people? Yeah. So maybe I should also like and tell what you is guys the what, what kind of project it is. Yeah, like so um, I'm doing, I'm a neuroscientist. I do neuroscience. And what we do is we, be, uh, we record brain activity with a big machine called uh, magnetoencephalograph. Uh, and it produces a lot of data, and this data needs to be processed. And actually, now the, the data analysis pipelines grow quite big and complex. Um, and so there's no way, if you're a PhD, say, and you want to analyze the data, if you have to write all the code to analyze the data yourself, that's basically the end of your PhD. You will be done, you, you, uh, <laughs> and, and that's it. So it's not yeah. possible. Um, so luckily, people have been been doing that, and um, actually at, at Alto, this this started uh, sort of for project in Python uh, to sort of collect this data analysis uh, code in there, which was called M and E uh, at the time, and it started with one uh, PhD at the time writing that software and making it available uh, on Git, and that grew over the years and grew and grew more because people started using it, and. Because people started using it, people started finding bugs. People started finding um, features that were missing. And then crucially, because the project was developed in an open way, and what that means I will get to in a minute, but um, people could report these problems. People could fix these problems. And people could contribute these fixes back into the project. So the project started receiving uh, contributions from other researchers, other mostly PhD students who are also just trying to get their data analysis done, um, hitting problems, fixing the problems, sending the fix to the project. And so the project grew and grew and grew, got better and better and better. Uh, this snowballs at some point. So at some point, the project became so, so good, basically, because all of these bugs were fixed, all these features were added, that there was 
yeah, well, we have some competitors, but very, very, very little competing packages uh, mm -hmm. right now. And so we get more and more users. So now we have like over thousands of, of, of users all over the world that are also doing this, that have the same sort of machines to record brain activity. And basically our code is, is what they use um, to, to, to analyze that data. And the, so, so, so now it also, the, so, so one key point I want to make here is by making this, um, your project open and sharing your code and allowing other people in to your project. So don't don't try to if if you keep all the control yourself, but it just loosen up a bit. Or allow code and contributions from other people in. Your project can get better. Your code can get better. Uh, yeah. People will start fixing your bugs and and and, and things will yeah. grow. So what does it mean in? Like, do you let everyone have access to modify things? Yeah, that would be that would be. Uh, a bit inconvenient, I, uh, I guess, because uh, <laughs> so especially uh, well, even when you have a small project, but especially now. So we're uh, with with this many users. Um, if we would allow anyone to just make changes um, to the main code base that gets immediately pushed to everything, I think we'll we'll be in a broken state almost continuously. <laughs> and I think yeah. this 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 is also true for sort of the code of like the core development team. Right, we we make changes all the time, and we we still write code and we still write bugs all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so the more people you have writing the code, the more people you have writing bugs. Um, so pushing directly onto main is, is really not a good idea. On the other hand, we, you would like to enable anyone to like make, make contributions and mm -hmm. change the code. So you don't want to, that to be some so, sort of formal bureaucratic process. Yeah. So like as Radovan says, it should be easy. It should be hard to make changes, but easy to make proposals for changes. Yes, that's in the end what we what we landed on. So we make heavy use of uh, of, of of Git and mostly of like the, the GitHub interface to that, but it could also be GitLab. There are other things. Um, and the the really core mechanic there that makes this possible is the concept of a pull request that anyone um, um, can just propose a change and say, so, well, anyone. It's even more than that. So you, you, anyone can have a copy of the, the, the source code and a copy of the project, and they can fix it for themselves and verify, hey, this works for me. This is great. And just start using it. And then they can also send a pull request back to the main branch too, mm -hmm. basically to us, to the, mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, to the central committee saying, hey, yeah. wait, I, I fixed this. Um, isn't that yeah. useful for you guys? And then uh, yeah. we can read over that code. And uh, usually we go back and forth a little bit because the codebacks or code base is now also quite large and complex so we would of course we try to be very polite and we say oh thank you that is so great that you uh, sort of uh, found this bug and even proposed the fix um yeah. i think we should also like add in this line and this line and this line just to make everything like work better we go back and forth a little bit yeah. and then um once everyone's happy, we we merge it in, and that that can happen really fast. It can happen within a day. Mm -hmm. It can mm -hmm. happen that you can just file a bug, and yeah. well, the next day it's like live, and anyone can do that, whether you're yeah. sort of part of the development team or if you're just some random researcher yeah. somewhere. So it's not like someone needs to use this and it doesn't do what they need. So tough, but like if a PhD student is here and needs it, they can't. Well, in the terminology of what we do today, they can make their own fork. They can fix it for themselves. They can test it without anyone else seeing this yet. And then when they think it's useful to others, they can make the pull request to the main repository, which basically says, here, I've done this change. Do you want it? Yes. Okay. And, and even if it's still under development, uh, so while it's still in the stage of a pull request, others can already use it. So mm. there's uh, so we also occasionally we'll have on the, on the forums and someone with the same problem Say, well, we have, yeah, but we have like Richard here and he had the problem. He actually fixed it. Mm -hmm. And we're still like working on fine tuning it. Um, mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we invite you to check out Richard's branch and uh, yeah, like, like, see if that works for you. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a very open thing. And this is also how we sort of grow. Like, how do you become a core developer on a project like this? Well, you start just start fixing stuff. You just start adding features. Mm -hmm. And we have sort of an internal rule that once a year we sort of go over the list of contributors that we have, and we say, "Wow, mm -hmm. wow, we 
Richard has been very active like with us for the last year. Let's invite Richard to become part of sort of the, mm. the steering group, as, as we call it. So mm -hmm. um, this is also the way sort of the, the, the power structure works. Uh, yeah. The more contributions you make, the more power you get in the, in the mm. project. And you, this sort of also grows organically that you see yeah. when somebody else touches a piece of code that you originally wrote, then usually we we will ping you and you will get dragged into the conversation a bit and say, mm -hmm. hey, well, this is mm -hmm. somebody else is trying to change code or proposing yeah. to change code that that you wrote. What do you think about this? We always try yeah. to keep people involved. That yeah. sort of your contribution also it remains a little bit your mm -hmm. a little bit your territory, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay. Well, we're at the time for the lesson, so maybe we should go on. I guess if you have any other questions related to this uh where's my Chris? Yeah. is it okay if i ask one question but we yeah. can we can then also answer it in, in writing I will, is that okay i will defer to richard but for me it's okay but uh, no? well oh, i'm sorry i was looking sorry, at i wanted to ask one more question mine i think this was really fascinating and super interesting yeah. and such a nice intro to what we will do today but i wanted to ask so as the as the project has been growing uh, what were the growing pains? I mean, anything that you didn't anticipate at the beginning that at some point became a bit of a bottleneck or, or an yeah. issue? There, there, that's, that's a really good question. And there, there are a few. I'm going to mention three. Um, one growing pain is the, um, the burden on, uh, of reviewing pull requests. Once you start getting more and more pull requests, um, we have the policy always like there, there always needs to be one other set of eyes on this before you can like merge it into main. And so, well, people actually have to take the time to do this. This was eventually resolved by hiring people to work full time on the project. So that's basically uh. their job. They do nothing else than uh, review pure requests. Um, okay. Second, um, um, uh, uh, second part uh, of that is how to. Uh, how to enforce uh, code style and the, the, the code base is big. If you make a change, you have no idea like what else may break. This was solved by having like uh, extensive unit tests, extensive linters extended. So these are the, the CI robots, continuous integration robots are key. Otherwise this project could never work. Um, and then the third is actually uh, uh, latest one is well, when your community grows, you uh, uh, at some point also really need to have a good code of conduct. So we mm -hmm. had some uh, issues there that, okay, people started uh, behaving um, like not in the way that we would like people to behave. Uh, at some point contributors came into conflict with each other and became, uh, uh, had, had not positive experience with that as well. So when you go, go uh, grow bigger as a project, this becomes an, uh, a thing as well, like managing the people, because in the end, there's still people behind pull requests, writing messages. Um, I will not go into it <laughs> too much now, but uh, thank yeah, you but thanks. for that thanks. question. Okay. Well, I don't have anything else. So uh, thanks, Ryan, for being here. And I guess we will maybe... Well, if there's anyone else has questions about this kind of thing, then put them on HackMD. Yeah, HackMD. Uh, hang it, hang around the HackMD down there. there. Okay. okay. Thank you for having me and have fun, everybody, and go learn Git. It's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay. See you later. Bye. Yeah, this was such a great introduction to what we will do today. Yeah, we should find more things like this. But, okay. Yeah. Speaking of introduction, should we introduce ourselves before we go into the topic? Yes, so I guess people know me, so Danya? Yeah, yeah. hello everyone. Uh, my name is Tanya Pushpadas from University of Bergen, Norway. Uh, I'm so glad to be part of the Coder family team, and it's a great team to work with and uh, learn a lot. And for me, code family uh, carries a lot of values uh, in terms of knowledge transfer and most importantly, the inclusivity. I see that anyone who is interested can join and this uh, lesson material is open. Uh, so this is, uh, I hope it will go further than, more than beyond this uh, large size and people from other part of the world also could benefit from uh, these kind of workshops and the lesson materials we are developing. Uh, yeah, I, 
I hope that, uh, and I try to work on that outreach part uh, really more so that uh, really people in need who get this, uh, the benefit of this. And, uh, and I also want to thank you all the uh, team members here who works behind the scene and answering hacking, uh, the collaborative document and working on the lesson materials. And uh, it's a lot of hard work from everyone and I'm so glad to be part of it. Thanks. And uh, my name is Sado Van Bast, and I'm so much looking forward to go through this lesson with, uh, with Tania and uh, also with the help of Richard and many other people. Um, I'm talking, so we are, Tania and Mina are now in Norway, Richard in Finland. So I, I'm streaming here from Tromso, Northern Norway, looking out and, and crisp, lots of snow. It's, it's really amazing to us how big these workshops grew and that we, that we can have now many teams and many people participating from beyond the Nordics. And as also as Tania said, we want to really increase the reach, engage more people, become more welcoming. There is a lot to improve um, and really looking forward to today. I wanted to say a few more things and that is, did we, I, I liked how you also highlighted there are so many people behind this. Did we mention this swan analogy in this workshop already? Kind of like it, I heard it somewhere else in a, in a, at a conference. So when you see a swan on a lake, it moves really gra gracefully, calm, everything looks, you know, <laughs> under control. But then if you look under the water, there are these two little legs and so they pedal. So there are here many people who, who pedal under the water and make sure that this looks somehow graceful. <laughs> um, today, I really like this, uh, this lesson today because there will be part of it will be somehow like an improv. So we don't really know what will happen because we will today co actually collaborate on something together. And to me, that's really exciting because there will be things that we don't anticipate yet that they will happen. And I, it's one of my favorite lessons. I think before we go into the lesson, I wanted to also say a few more practical things. So we will, we will take breaks every hour, 10 minutes. So the plan is to have three breaks. There will be also so that, so that the team leads can prepare. We will have exercises. There will be two exercises, but they, they will be longer. Each will be half an hour. The idea is that then we can really explore, we can really go deep. If you are working in a team or participating in a team to give you time to discuss with the team. But also individual learners can participate in this. So we will try to collaborate on projects also with individual learners. And maybe I should take the screen to remind that as an individual learner, if you want to then later participate, you can request access to these exercise repositories. Take the screen, which we will start working on in approximately one hour. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'll send the screen to you and then disappear. Uh, okay. Today, I'll try to do more raising of the HackMD questions by voice if I see something that's very important to address soon. Thanks. So that will help. Yes. And, and we are watching the document, but it is it is many things to watch as everybody is <laughs> experiencing here. Yeah. So see you all later. Bye. Yeah. Here we are looking at the the workshop page. Um, so one thing I wanted you to know, if you haven't noticed, we, we post here news, um, news from day two, news from day three. And if you want to participate as an individual learner in these collaborative exercises later, here you find instructions on what to do. Okay. And then today we jump into, we are on day three. We talk about collaborative collaboration in Git and GitHub. I can then open up the page and you also find it on the collaborative document, the link.